You should be preaching getting rich because, you know, you're a Christian, right? You don't become a millionaire by depending on other people. When you're rich, when you will expose your character at that point. I've paid my entire 30s for the mistakes of my 20s. If you're still recognizable from 5, 7, 10 years ago, something wrong there. I've been a rich man, and I've been a poor man, and I chose this every time. I've been a rich man, and I have been a poor man, and I chose rich every fucking time. <laughs> when I have to face my problems, I show up in the back of a limo. Wearing a two thousand dollar suit and a forty thousand dollar gold fucking watch. He threw it away. He's like a wolf of Wall Street. You listen to me and you listen well. Are you behind on your credit card bills? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. Is your landlord ready to evict you? Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. Does your girlfriend think you're a fucking worthless loser? Yes. Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. I want you to deal with your problems. By becoming rich. Listen, man, I've I've had problems too as well. I've been bought on both sides, and I have to agree. Maybe not in that particular demeanor, throwing away a forty thousand dollar watch, whatever case would be. But you know, back to this book that we read, Book of the Month. I'm actually thinking big. It talks about excusitis. Four biggest reasons why people have excuses of why they can't get something done. You know, people often, from a biblical perspective, Matt. You know, you shouldn't be preaching getting rich because you know you're a Christian, right? You know, uh, God says, you know, the, the, you know, money is the root of all evil. No, in 1 Timothy, uh, it talks about the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money being evil. Money is just a tool. Money, money is, is, is an object. It's, it's, it's a tool. It can't be evil by itself. The use of it is evil. And the use of it is the user of that specific tool. And so the, the flip side to a, a prosperity gospel is also the poverty gospel. We shouldn't have anything. I'm talking about being right in the middle. You got enough to make sure you're taking care of your family. You got enough to make sure you're taking care of your children. You got enough to make sure you're creating generational wealth. Oftentimes in the Bible, how many different scriptures in Proverbs that King Solomon despised the word laziness? King Solomon, riches and wisest king we ever lived, despised the word laziness. Talk about the lazy man does not deserve to eat. If that if you don't work for your your current existence, you don't deserve to be living off the of other people, which is why I have a big problem with this whole Biden increasing the interest rates for people that have good credit and decreasing the interest rates for people that have bad credit. It's opposite of this principle. And you're rewarding mediocrity. You're rewarding for you to be dependent upon somebody else. You don't become a millionaire, a first generation cash flow millionaire by depending on other people. You become a first generation ca a cash flow millionaire by having faith, by asking yourself to gain greater skills, to improve in different areas, to overcoming failures, so therefore that you can become successful, so therefore you can be independent and not dependent. These are things that the path of getting rich and also money will expose your character at that point. When you're rich, what will you do? Will you be a bigger giver or will you be more of a nasty person? Money's going to expose that. But in the meantime, get rich. I highly suggest it. I'd rather you have money in the bank for things that you want to do then not have money in the bank. Let's look at his next video about the three habits that can make you a millionaire. Let's take a look at this. Are the three habits that made you a millionaire at 23? Learning to say no. No to girls, no to parties, no yeah. to plus 18 <laughs> videos because those things, they really distracted me a lot. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn how to control myself. Number two, I love to fail. I have failed at failure, almost yeah. every single thing in my life. And only the lessons that I've learned are worth billions and not millions. And number three is going to the gym and taking care of my health. Because it's health first, wealth, love, and then happiness. By the way, this is our first time looking at this video. Uh, by the way, the girl he's talking to across the way, beautiful. Beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. And for him to be in control, a man, a man that can manage his emotions, his discipline over his character, and go places, man. It takes discipline to do that. But what's, what's the flip side? The flip side is, I want to sleep with every girl. I want to hook up with every girl. I want to go to every party. And then you look up. By the way, I did that for 10 years. And I look back and I said, you know what? What I have to show for? I don't have any really solid friendships. I don't have barely any money saved in the bank. I've got nothing to show for, but got everything to owe for. And that's why I often say I've paid my entire 30s for the mistakes of my 20s. What's your thoughts about those habits? Notice it wasn't about specific investing or... Nothing. You know, real estate or stock or crypto. Lifestyle. lifestyle. It's all lifestyle, man. It, 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 as, a, as a man, if you have an, an, an immature mindset, women are going to be a, a massive distraction for you. And I'm, I'm at fault for that as well. I'm a, I'm a huge fault for that, which is why 
uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I think you were telling me a story about PBD, how he was telling, how he, I think he, was it a year without any type of intimacy with the woman? <laughs> right. And then yeah. you also went a, a long period of time without uh, any intimacy, whether it was by choice or voluntary. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't have any serious relationship for 14 yeah. years. Yeah. Of course I had my, you know, you know, girlfriends here and there, but, uh, it was nothing where, where, you know, I was going to get, you know, in my, put my, expose myself in a position of, by the way, there's just one girl one time and, uh, I cut it off with her. Because I, I said, let me borrow your phone. Next thing you know, I see on her phone, she's kissing some other dude. And I'm like, what, what's this? And she's like, that was an old picture. He just sent it to me. Okay, if he sent it to her, why do you have it still in your phone? Yeah. I said, BS. I'm not, I'm not calling. Yeah, I, so anyway, I, I, I cut her off with her. And uh, anyway, a year later, guess what she has? Another kid with that guy. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, that could have been me. So I've dodged the bullet. You know, I would have, and I would have had three baby mamas, unmarried, I've been partying. I had yeah. a great time temporarily. This guy at 23 years old, thinking long term. The problem with most people, they're, they're too short term thing. History favors those that think for the long term. And uh, if you think in that the man, manner, you're not going to be able to look back in your life and say, you know what? I'm glad I made that decision. How many people love Facebook memories? Oh. I love Facebook memories. Some people hate that shit. I hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the only time to look back is to see how far you've come. Yeah. Sadly, there's a lot of people out there with Facebook memories, and their life is still the same. Financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, they're still the same. And their current status updates and posts justify why they are still today the same person they were five, six, seven, ten years ago. Listen, you should change. You should evolve. If you are really set on values and principles, they should be even more thought out. They should be even more clear. Or you should have gotten rid of certain people or certain values and that aren't working in those five, six, seven years. It shouldn't be the same person. If you're still recognizable... From five, seven, ten years ago, there's something wrong there. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.